This is Twit. The shakeup among the kernel maintainers. You may or may not be aware of this, but within the past, uh, I think it's within the past week, um, a, a change landed in the Linux kernel and a, a couple of dozen, one or two dozen maintainers were sort of quietly removed from their maintainership. And the thing that they all had in common was they basically all had a .ru email address. Um, they, they were all Russians. And they, so the, the, the first thing is you may be surprised actually, like this is something we should mention. You may be surprised that, wait, there were Russians that were maintainers in the Linux kernel. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, there were. Um, and some of these people, in fact, all of the ones that were removed were employed by or affiliated with uh, a handful of Russian companies like Baikal being one of them. Um, who makes little ARM-based CPUs, but by call products end up in drones and missiles and things used by the Russian military. And they, you know, so long as they write good code, nobody particularly cared that they were in the kernel. There, there've been, there've been some minor things in the past where I think, I think one, a, a maintainer from Ukraine opted to not take a pull request from a maintainer that was, um, employed by Baikal for potentially obvious reasons. Um, so there have been a couple of things that have happened, but they just they just quietly yanked all these people from being maintainerships. And there was a little bit of an uproar. Um, and finally, we got, we got some clarity on this. And so one of the core kernel maintainers came out and said, look, the Linux Foundation lawyers gave us this, these guidelines. They said, okay, we finally got it cleared that we can tell you exactly what they said. And it was, if your company is on the US OFAC SDN list, subject to OFAC sanctions program. So essentially, the US government puts out, these are the companies that are sanctioned for one reason or another. Uh, or owned or controlled by a company on that list, our ability to collaborate you will be subject to restrictions and you cannot be on the maintainer's file. So the... The lawyers at the Linux Foundation came to the conclusion very recently that anyone that we suspect is being, you know, either employed by or collaborating with one of these sanctioned companies, they just they can't be on the maintainer's file. It's it's a it's a problem. We can't do it legally. We cannot do it. So like, and and that's fairly understandable because the Linux Foundation is based in the United States. Uh, Linus Torvalds and Greg KH, the two at the real at the top of the, they're both U.S. Uh, Greg is a U.S. citizen for sure. I I don't know off the top of my head if Torvalds is an actual citizen or just long term resident, but he resides in the United States regardless. Um, and so like on one hand, well that's that's fairly understandable. Um. But then on the other hand, there, there were some questions that people had. And one of them was like, what about Huawei? Uh, what, what about the Chinese sanctioned companies that are still, you know, part of the Linux kernel development team? <laughs> and I thought that was a, a really valid question. Uh, Ted So, one of the other kernel maintainers, high level guy, came out, spoke out and said, hey, just so you know, there are different rules and regulations within these sanctions. And while there is there is an exception in place for these Chinese companies, that exception is not in place for the Russian companies. Okay, again, that's understandable. Uh, people were annoyed that this was done suddenly without much communication, um, but it is what it is. All right, so that that's 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 part of this. And then there was a statement from James Bottomley, again, a core kernel maintainer, who obviously was part of the discussion with the lawyers about this. And here's what he said. And this is the part that's important. He said, we are hoping that this action alone will be sufficient to satisfy the U.S. Treasury Department in charge of sanctions. And we, we won't also have to remove any existing patches. And when I read that, my, my head exploded because this says to me, someone from the U.S. Treasury Department contacted the Linux Foundation and said, hey, not only do you have members of these sanctioned companies in your maintainer's file, which is a fair, that, that in and of itself 
is a fairly legitimate thing to do. It's just, it's just, these are the sanctions. These are the laws. So there's that, like that's fairly reasonable to me. But this statement implies that there was a threat that you would also have to remove the code that these people had written. And that is a problem. And I will tell you that is a problem because in the United States, code is protected speech. This has been established several times in court cases. Code is First Amendment protected speech. And the idea that the government can come in and say, you're not allowed to say this because it was first said by someone that we disapprove of is a huge First Amendment violation and a huge problem. So this we are now past the whole Russian, China sanctions issue, and we're now on to what is the US government allowed to do when it comes to things like the Linux kernel and other software pro- projects? I, 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 see a, I see a huge disconnect between these two. It's, it's two separate issues. Um, you can, you know, you could say, I, I really don't want Russians or people associated with these Russian companies in, in the maintainer saw. Like, that, that's fine. That's a discussion to have. That's fine. But to say the U.S. government gets to come along and say, you're not allowed to put this into your source code, which is protected speech. Yeah, I think that's just entirely beyond the pale. And I have I've literally already called on the Linux Foundation to to launch a lawsuit against the U.S. government because I consider this to be entirely unreasonable and illegal. Um, and this sort of a precedent cannot stand. Uh, we will all be in trouble if the government can come along and say, nope, we don't like that code. You're not allowed to put it into your open source project. Um, so that is my take on it. I am, I am, I am beside myself over this. It's a good thing uh, you get that Foundation, take. I know where you can find some real good lawyers that will help you. The Linux Foundation already has really good lawyers. Um, I, just so you know, I've sent, I've sent an email directly to Greg. I have contact information. I've been in contact with him before. Um, and I, man, I, I am unhappy and worried over this. It strikes me as being a terrible thing. So we'll see what happens. The, they, they don't know that they have to take anything out. They are. So the, the exact statement is that they are hoping that this action alone, removing them as maintainers, will be enough to sufficiently satisfy the U.S. Treasury Department that is in charge of sanctions. So they're hoping that the action they have taken is enough to satisfy them. They are therefore hoping that they won't have to remove any existing patches. So, I mean, just stop and think about that, though. If the U.S. government said, okay, you've got to remove any patches in the Linux kernel that any of these people associated with these companies have written back to the beginning of when the sanctions happened, I guess. Like, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. Who? I mean, if they said... <laughs> no, it would break everything. That's the thing. You cannot just remove the patches. That that's not. So uh, the f- friend of mine, who's a fellow developer, we were talking about this, and he says you would basically just have to roll the entire source tree back to when the sanction started, and mm-hmm. then start over from there. Which uh, the government, being a a user of Linux, seems like it could be rough for them too. But um, I, I I wonder maybe like, that's part of their concern going forward but if it's all good now but i wonder you know linux i mean linux isn't like a business per se i don't know how the organizational unit um holds for like linux itself so i I, i'm Mm -hmm. curious how what kind of enforcement could actually be done like who would be responsible or what to entity or 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 is somebody concerned about what recently happened uh, earlier this year possibly happening with the linux kernel the x the xz hack yeah so i that may be what someone is concerned about that is a ridiculous concern to have in this context because if someone was going to do that they would not do it from a dot ru email address they would do it from a dot gmail address they would say hi my name is john smith and I live in the middle of the United States, and here's my patch to make things better. Um, yeah. yeah, what if they just said no? I mean, what's... I, I... So, okay, so the Linux Foundation is a trade, trade organization. So it is a... Um, 
It is not a nonprofit. It is a, I think trade organization is actually what they call it. But they don't but, control Linux either. No, but they pay the, they, they have a lot of money and they pay the salary of Torvalds and Greg KH and some of the other core maintainers. Mm, like there is, exactly. there's a, there's a pot of money there that you could at least go after for fines. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm just curious how that could, could all play out. I mean, if, if they just said no, <laughs> like if there's, a way that could play out you know uh, he goes back to uh to his home country and just runs it from there gets some <laughs> other sponsor to pay him and it's like what are you gonna do <laughs> well okay so- part of the problem is some of these sanctions are i can i guess the be- only way i can think of to put it is copied by some of the other countries there are sanctions uh, in countries around the world and one other one other point to this is uh torvalds in typical torvalds fashion you know sped it off on the kernel mailing list and uh he basically said look guys i'm from finland there's no love loss between me and the russians <laughs> <laughs> which is like okay that's fine um there there was one thing he said that i was i was honestly a little disappointed by um, and I may be wrong here, but I will just tell you my thoughts on it. He, he, there has been pushback and Torvalds mentioned the tush pushback and he said, it's, you know, it's obvious that the Russian troll farms are out in force because there's so many people that have replied to this. And I have seen this, I've seen this pattern a few times now. We saw it with, with Godot and now we're seeing it with Torvalds that, when a company or a person makes a questionable decision that is unpopular in certain places and the obvious thing happens that a lot of people reach out to them to tell you to tell them that it's an unpopular decision and they don't approve of it they immediately jump to oh it's bots it's russian bots it's like maybe it's not russian bots and maybe there's just enough of us out here that are annoyed by the decision you made we think you handled this poorly i i'm I'm a little over the whole let's jump straight to it's Russian bots every time because I don't think it's all Russian bots and I don't think it's always well, it's Russian t- bots. Sometimes it's American bots. Sometimes it's real American uh, people that are annoyed. It's Malaysian and <laughs> whatever else. <laughs> anyway, that's 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 my piece. I have I have spoken my piece on that matter. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.